good morning everybody today we are looking at germination germination as a part of growing plants science for class 5 cbse germination as a part of growing plants science for cbse class 5 plants are really very important for us that is why we are studying about growing plants why are plants important plants are helpful to us in very many ways the most important of them is by way of photosynthesis plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen oxygen is important for us because animals plants everybody needs oxygen to breathe we can live only if we breathe so plants are important for the planet earth because all living things need oxygen plants give oxygen as a by product of photosynthesis photosynthesis is a method by which plants make their food they take carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight using water and the nutrients in the soil they make their food while making food they give out oxygen this oxygen given out by the leaves of the plant is very important for us to breathe plants are also useful in very many other ways they help in decoration they help in preventing soil erosion they help in climate control because they are part of the water cycle as a part of photosynthesis they create water vapor which helps us to give rains their roots are very strong in holding the mud and soil so they prevent soil erosion or prevent the effect of floods in case of rain many parts of plants help us in making medicines plant serve as food we can eat almost most parts of the plant some roots of some plant leaves of some plant flowers of some plant fruits of some plant seeds of some plant stem of some plant roots of some plant we eat so plant serve us as a food it helps us as a beverage tea coffee cocoa etc flavoring agents plants also help us in making fabrics the natural fiber like cotton or jute is got from plants plants are the home for silkworms which gives us silk from coir we make ropes we make uh, <coughs> door mats or floor mats we make mattresses so plants are helpful in many almost all parts of plants are so plants are essential so we have to take care of plants and we have to grow plants how plants can be grown plants can be grown from very many ways most importantly plants are grown from seeds so a seed lies dormant during winter and then the sun grows into a plant in spring and then it produces <clears throat> the plant produces flowers flowers become fruits the fruits have seeds inside them and then the seeds survive even if the plant dies so this is how the reproduction of a plant happens a plant when it grows gives flowers and fruits and which has seeds inside the seed become source of or a point of growth of another plant plants are multicellular living things like animals plants are also living things animals don't animals move plants don't move that's the only difference over there plants need fresh water to grow some plants grow in salt water also there are lots of plants under the sea also there's lot of marine life we call it as a flora and fauna that is the plants and animals inside the sea It is a big portion of the living things are in sea 50% of all the living things are found in sea most of the plants use the energy of the sunlight to turn water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and sugar a process called photosynthesis and so they grow they also store the food as they grow and keep the food stored they mature and then they produce flowers seeds fruits and these seeds give rise to new plant germination is a process of a seed producing a new plant germination is a process of a seed producing a new plant what is structure of a seed this is a sample seed this is cotyledon the thick portion of the seed the hard portion of the seed is a cotyledon the outside portion is the seed coat seed coat is also called testa testa or seed coat this is cotyledon or a seed leaf and then this is also cotyledon this is also cotyledon this is a side view this is a cut inside lateral view there is a plumule plumule is a embryonic shoot plumule is the shoot the portion where the stem the branches the leaves of the tree come out is a plumule what is the radical radical is the embryonic root this is embryonic shoot this is embryonic root 
where the root comes out. Radical is a place from where the root comes out and plumule is a place from where the shoot comes out in a new tree. The embryo is the part due to which a seed is able to reproduce. So, plumule is a portion from where the shoot comes, radical is a portion from where the root comes out. Cotyledon is the seed leaf which is the storehouse of food. Cotyledon is the seed leaf which is the storehouse of food and the seed coat is called a testa. Testa and cotyledon. Testa protects the seed, cotyledon stores the food. Plumule gives rise to shoot, radical gives rise to root. These are the most important parts of a seed. There are pores on the seed coat. Through this pores, the seeds breathe. And when it is soaked in water, the water goes in and water is absorbed by the seed through those pores. There are ridges also on the seed. It's called raphe. The ridges are called raphe. The shoot is called a plumule and the root is called radical. And there is a epicotyl and hydrocotyl. Epicotyl is the upper part of the axis and hydrocotyl is the region between epicotyl and radical. This is the place from where the shoot and root comes out on a seed. This is the structure of a seed. You should be knowing how to draw a seed and name the parts. This is a picture that shows how a plant, this new plant is growing from a seed by way of germination. You have a seed when there is adequate warmth, sunlight and air. Only then germination happens. Germination happens when there is adequate warmth, sunlight and air and water. So there is a seed when the seed coat is damp and wet through the pores when it is able to soak the water in it slowly expands and then from the embryo you get the root from the radical and the shoot from the plumule. First the radical comes out as a root. This is the root that comes out and then this growth of the radical and plumule happens because the embryo in the seed eats up the food stored in cotyledon. What is cotyledon? The seed leaf. And as it grows, the seed coat or testa wears away, wears off, breaks away. So this brown color is a seed coat testa. The green color is a cotyledon seed leaf or the food storage. So from the embryo, the radical and plumule, the root and the shoot comes out. First the root comes out and then as it grows, as the cotyledon is eaten away and it shrinks. Cotyledon shrinks and becomes almost nothing. So when the cotyledon disappears, the shoot starts coming. That is the leaves crop up. When the foliage leaves crop up, they are able to do photosynthesis. That is, from the sunlight, air and water, they can prepare their own food. So this has to happen because all the food stored in cotyledon has been finished or absorbed by the root and shoot. So the foliage leaves comes up and these leaves produce food and using this food, the plant starts growing. So this is how a germination happens from a seed to a seedling. Seed to seedling to a small baby plant. So these are the roots. This is how the root grows what is under the soil and shoot is the portion of the plant above the soil. A new baby plant growing from a seed with the aid of water, warmth, soil and sunlight is called germination. A new baby plant growing from the seed with the aid of air, water, warmth and sunlight and soil is called germination. If there is no sunlight, if there is no warmth, if there is no water, if there is no air, it will be very difficult for a seed to germinate. Not all seeds germinate. Seeds wait for a right condition or a sufficient condition for germination. Many seeds lie dormant for years before they find a suitable condition to germinate. <clears throat> now how do plants reproduce? Plants reproduce from the seed. There are other ways also a plants can reproduce. We can grow a plant from a stem. For example, a potato has pores. You would have seen a potato which has small small pores. Likewise, am, sweet potato, all those tubers have pores in them. From that pores, a plant comes up. A petiole is a leaf stalk. This is an aerial stem. Aerial stem is which is on the air. This is a lateral bud. On the stem, there is a bud. From that bud, a new branch or a leaf comes up. But there is a bud on the pores, the pores and buds on the tuber. From there also, the plant grows. 
tuber all potatoes are called tubers because food is stored on the root so this root tuber it has small small buds from the bud a plant or the shoot comes out the shoot also has buds from the other leaves come out petiole is a leaf stalk over here likewise from a bulbil also you can see here from this stem the foliage leaf is coming here is a stem and it is coming from this bottom portion this is the fleshy scale leaf containing stored the food scale leaf containing stored the food this is the containing stored the food this is the root and from this buds it grows the shoots grow this is a growing bulb like onion and garlic and all a flower bud is there apex of the leaf or a foliage leaf foliage leaf is the one which produces which takes care of the photosynthesis and production of oxygen and production of food this is a fleshy scale leaf containing stored food onion is also onion and garlic is a type of bulb and then you have a tubers here we grow or the new plant grows from the stem earlier we have seen how a new plant grows from the seed new plant can also grow from other parts of the plant for example in ginger this is a rhizome ginger ginger here you have a bud you have a lateral bud you have a scale leaf and from this bud it is developing into a shoot aerial shoot is developing this is a scale leaf scar this is a scale leaf this is a lateral bud here is a node from every node and from every bud it is possible a new shoot will come up and it will grow into a plant this is ginger likewise carrot can be grown from the pores if you cut here the carrot and put it in a suitable situation the, these leaves will keep on growing likewise turnip radish all can be grown from the stem <coughs> and you cut it and keep it this there is another way of reproduction by the plants is called stem cutting we have seen how it grows from the roots how it grows from the stem how it grows from the seed now we will see how it can grow from stem cutting rose hibiscus are the important examples where if you cut a portion of the stem of an existing plant and if you give adequate soil warmth sun water air this will start giving shoots leaves and it will start flowering and it will grow herbs and house plants can be grown in this fashion this is called asexual propagation because we are not using the capacity of two flowers to form a seed because of pollination we are not using the seeds but we are using from within the same plant without the help of another plant it is being propagated or reproduced it involves taking a section of the stem of a parent plant and then manipulating it to create a new plant likewise two stems can be mixed together to create that is how they do a colorful roses and all they create by mixing a red rose stem with a white rose stem etc hybrid growing from a root we have seen growing from a stem we have seen rhizomes then this is growing from a root this is a swollen root of a tuber this is a pore or a bud from where a new shoot comes out old stem and a new shoot this is what it has been cut away and this is a new shoot is coming likewise a new shoot you can see coming from a banana or a plant and plant also growing from it now reproduction from leaves some plants can sprout a new plant from a well planted leaf if you plant a leaf from the leaf a new plant can grow some plants are capable of it then there are plants like bryophyllum or kalancho so bryophyllum this spelling you have to know this is a very popular plant b r y o p h y l l u m bryophyllum this plant can sprout even when still attached to the mother plant it is not necessary for the leaf to be cut and planted for it to sprout it is not necessary for the leaf to be cut and planted for it to sprout bryophyllum can sprout even while it is still attached to the mother plant bryophyllum can sprout even while it is still attached to the mother plant the process is called mitosis process is called mitosis where plantlets are formed at the edges of the leaves plantlets are formed at the edges of the leaves thanks for watching this video in the next session we shall look at dispersal please subscribe